so many pigs there that they celebrate the pig and uh, in fact their claim to fame is, is that there are more pigs in that in that place than there is anywhere else in the world now some people would dispute that but you know what I'm not going to argue over pigs okay. the bottom line is it's rural and growing up in this environment <clears throat> we understood very clearly the idea of seed time and harvest that there was a time to plant the seed and then there was a time of harvest. In the passage that we have today, Jesus is using this very type of illustration because the people of, of uh, Israel were very close to the land, if you will. It wasn't like they're 
food came wrapped in cellophane, um, you know, pre-butchered and all that stuff. They, uh, they very much understood the connection to the land. And in fact, their, their festivals, their feasts, their religious observances were generally speaking associated with something in the agricultural calendar as well. And so when Jesus stands up and, and starts to use an illustration about the sower went out to seed, they have an image. They can see very clearly. Now, my image would be different because you see, my dad worked at John Deere Plow Planner. And John Deere perfected this thing, the planter, which could plant like 16 rows of corn at one time. It was an amazing development. So I have a different image, but I have at least an image of this idea of it was time to sow, and then there was a time to reap. And so Jesus uses this kind of an illustration to get the attention of his audience for them to understand that the sower went out to do his job, which was to sow the seed. And then he tells us that the seed is the word of God. He is the word of God. And so we find this situation where some people respond to who Christ is as the Word of God. Some people respond very quickly and they rise up and they say, oh, praise God. But then after a short period of time, the devil comes and plucks away the life that they had started to enjoy and started to walk in. And it never they never came to harvest time in their lives. Then he tells us that not only does the devil come and, and seek to uh, destroy that which is planted in them, because you see the seed is always good, but also that the reality is some people are, they don't have the rootedness in them. They, they're shallow. They don't understand the depth of what God is trying to do in their lives. And so they, they spring up. When I was in the Baptist church back in Illinois, my first uh, full-time assignment as a pastor, the, one of the uh, leaders of the church said, they're a flash in the pan. You know where that imagery comes from? Throwing water. What's that? Throwing water in the pan. No. Michael, do you know? Muzzle loader. What's that? Ding, 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 ding. It's a muzzle loader. It, something came down and it hit the, uh, the uh, gunpowder, it lit, and then you had to wait for it, wait for it, and then the, the gun went off. So a flash in the pan is something that, you know, is denoting that it happens quickly, but in some cases, it didn't fire. So it was just a flash in the pan. It wasn't an actual threat. And so some of the people that received Christ they're just a flash in the pan. They, they respond quickly, but then it kind of diminishes. Then he tells us another interesting soil condition, shall we say, which is for some, it falls on the soil and then the worries and the concerns of the world choke it out. So you have Three things. You have the devil coming to steal it away. You have our own inability to grasp what God is doing. And then we also have the focus on the world leading to us being robbed of life in Christ. The cares, the worries of the world. But then there's one place where it thrives and it comes to harvest. And that is that it falls on good soil. What is this idea of good soil? It's the soil of the heart, of a heart that is ready to receive Christ. A heart that recognizes the need for Christ. I shared last night that I went to a memorial yesterday during the day for one of my hospice patients and there was a couple of Baptist preachers there always makes me a little bit nervous <laughs> um, but uh, as we started to talk I said well I need to uh, I need to let you know that 
I'm actually, I was ordained Southern Baptist, but I'm, I'm Orthodox now. I'm an Orthodox priest. And it was a little bit quiet. Um, but one of the wives said, oh, my husband has an interesting story. And she says, tell him your story. And he, he proceeds to tell me about, he had a friend in high school who was not the kind of a guy that you would expect that he would become a man of faith. He was a bit of a troublemaker. Maybe didn't follow the rules. No, I'm not talking about me. <laughs> and uh, this young man ends up, turns towards God and finds his way in the Russian Orthodox Church and starts to witness to this man whom, with whom I was speaking. And he said, what he had to say touched his heart and caused him to really question where he was at in his life. And he said, I made the decision to begin to follow Jesus. The word of God found good soil there. Sometimes that soil has been turned over, broken up by hardships, by struggles. Sometimes it's just recognizing the goodness of God. But the question is, what is the condition of our heart? Do we receive the word of God with joy and it grows up into fruitfulness? Or do we just, is it a passing fad? Unfortunately, I will tell you that in my experience as a, an Orthodox priest, we've had those folks that have sprung up and really seemed to grasp the Christian faith only to sometime later depart from the path. And it's a sorrowful thing, it's a sad situation, but it's a situation that <coughs> speaks to the condition of the heart. So this, this passage, if you will, is really directed towards how the world will receive Christ. But I also tell you, I think it's worthy to reflect and consider our own heart, the soil of our own heart. Are there places in our heart where God, the word comes to us and wants to change us and we let the lies of the devil steal that opportunity away from us? Are there places in our heart where if we're very honest, we have to admit that we're just behaving in a shallow manner? There's no real rootedness in us. Somebody wrongs us. Can we forgive? We wrong somebody else. Can we ask for forgiveness? Can we see God in the complexities of life, even when somebody says and does something that we don't like? Can we find Christ in the midst of the struggles that we go through? Or do we resort to shallow, petty thinking? And lastly, do we let the cares and the worries of the world choke out the life of God in us? Because you see, they ultimately can't coexist. When we are caught up in the cares and the worries of the world, we may have the best soil in the world, but now that the weeds are growing up around us, the brambles are choking out the light that could cause us to grow. What's the condition of our heart? I'll conclude with this story, and I, I'm sure I've told it at least five or six times before, <laughs> but I can't remember, and most of you can either. Right out of high school, I had the privilege to go work on a farm with a, 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 a farmer named Wade. And Wade hired me <coughs> to 
help cut weeds out of soybeans. And if any of you have ever done farm work, you know one thing for sure, it's no fun. It does, you know, it doesn't even enter in this idea of fun. But Wade and I would get up early in the morning and we would go out there and we would cut weeds out of soybeans. Now most of you don't even know what a soybean looks like unless it's wrapped in plastic and comes from sprouts. <laughs> Wade had treated the soil with fertilizer, with a, probably with some herbicide and all those things that we now know are killing us. But uh, he had done everything he could, but he still knew that there was going to be weeds pop up in the midst of the corn, of the uh, soybean. And so imagine I'm an 18 year old kid that doesn't really like work. And uh, I get up early in the morning and I go out there and Wade says, here, and he hands me a hoe. I'm like, what do I do with this? Do I lean on it or <laughs> what's this for? And he says, you'll learn quick, son. And he says, follow me. And Wade began to go down the rows and Wade would take that hoe and he would loop it out there like a samurai master. <laughs> and it would come crashing down and it pop, we destroyed. And he would swing that bad boy up again and he would bring it back down, we destroyed, never touched the soybean farm. Now I will tell you that when I first started and I said, oh, I can do that. <laughs> no soybeans for you. <laughs> it was difficult. It took some precision. But in the end, I learned how to cut weeds out of beans. And you see, it's the same thing in our life. Weeds will creep up. We gotta cut them out. Amen. We gotta cut them out. Amen. Because if we don't, they'll overcome that which would bring forth fruitfulness. And the weeds in our lives can be worries, it could be opinions, it could be arguments, it could be acts of the flesh. And all those things are going to compete with the harvest that God wants to bring into our lives. Because you see, one thing a farmer never does is just plant a seed and then say, that's it, I'm done till fall. He tends to his crop. He gets up in the morning, he worries about it, he reads the weather forecast. Is it going to rain? Is it going to rain too much? Is it going to rain too little? He watches all the things that are going on. He watches the market to see what the price is. He is constantly attentive to his, his crop. He goes out there, he makes sure that it's, it's been freed up to grow because he has one thing in mind. What is it? Harvest. And that's the thing that we should have in mind. Will we be a part of the great harvest? You know? Christ has been planted into our hearts so that we can grow in grace and knowledge of him. And whatever, whatever competes with that, we need to eradicate it as quickly as we can. Because what we need to understand is, you know, we may still limp along and be okay, have a sense that God loves us, but we are being robbed of the fruitfulness of that Christ would have for us. A friend of mine, when he first came to the Orthodox Church, he said, you know, what's this prayer about where you pray for an abundance of the, of the, of the uh, fruit of the harvest, seasonable weather? And he said, you know, come on, man, we're in America. That was kind of the attitude. And then later on, when we started having food, you know, we show supply chain shortages, that's the nice political term. He started reconsidering and saying, oh, maybe we are at risk. And here's the thing is, we need to ask God 
to give us seasonable weather and an abundance of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it's going to take some work on our part to eradicate the weeds and tend to the soil that we might bear a hundredfold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.